Wagwan, Wagwan. Welcome to my channel, The DIY Yardy. Welcome back if you've been here before. In this video today, I'm doing a brake master cylinder replacement on a GMC Savannah uh, extended van. And uh, it's uh, just showing you the quickest and um, easiest way to do this job or the easiest way which in which works for me. All right. So this is the brake cylinder here and what is going on is it's leaking fluid from the rear of the cylinder and also down onto the fuse box that is located below the cylinder. That's it right there. Okay. So uh, what I do first of all is get this um, AC, that's the AC uh, pressure switch unplugged and you notice I have a piece of cardboard that I've um, laid out under the master cylinder because doing this job there's going to be a lot of brake fluid leaking down so I'm trying to protect that fuse box and you may also want to set something under the car like a container to catch the excess brake fluid that's going to be coming out all right so I'm going to go ahead and get these lines loose and you have a front a rear and um, also brake pressure switch all right so getting into this job, these are the tools I'm going to use. Large uh, screwdriver, uh, deep 15 millimeter 3 8 uh, 3 8 extension, 3 8 ratchet, a uh, 10 millimeter wrench, and a 14 millimeter. All right, and you also need um, like 32 ounce uh, brake fluid, dot three. This is my 15 millimeter wrench. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and get those lines loose. And, and of course, you need your new uh, brake master cylinder also for this job. All right, so getting these lines loose, and they shouldn't be, they shouldn't be um, too tight on there. First of all, I'm going to get my... Um, this is my um, brake uh, fluid level sensor. Get that unplugged and moved out of the way. So it's a little clip. You want to pry back on that clip there and pull back. It should come right off. As long as you pry, you, you release that clip and then pull back. Okay. So let's go ahead and get these lines loose. And uh, like I said, these are um, 15 millimeter. The line bolts are 15 millimeter. And this is going to be a messy job. So if you're working, you know, someplace where you don't want to get brake fluid on the ground or on your floor, you definitely want to set a container to catch the brake fluid. Because if you have, like, say, a painted garage floor, brake fluid can tear that up. Brake fluid is very corrosive to paint. Okay. So we're going to go ahead and get these pulled. You see I have that front one loose and it's already, you know, got a good amount of fluid coming out of there. So there are these two lines, the front and the rear, and then there's uh, the two uh, 15 that secures the master cylinder to the um, to the actual power booster, which on this vehicle is a hydraulic hydraulic booster. So problem the problem is like I said this brake fluid is leaking from the rear of the, the um, from the rear of the master and it's leaking down on the uh, fuse box which more than likely may need to be replaced also in this vehicle so this got a good amount of brake fluid you know saturated into it
kind of a messy job. So you're going to need some shop towels or a bit of paper napkins or paper towels. All right, so now I'm going to go ahead and get it removed from the, from the booster. And using a deep 15, my extension, my ratchet. Now I'm doing everything manually. If you have power tools, whatever works for you. Okay. Just trying to show you the simplest way possible. And also, you know, these these um these bolts, they aren't on there, you know, extremely tight, but you might need something for a little more like leverage like if you can put a extension extension on your um, socket to get more leverage or a piece of pipe whatever works for you okay so we've got that one side off I get to the other side you gotta maneuver that in there between the lines. comes out of there pretty easily just on this um, left side it's you know the, the space to work is not as roomy as on the right if you notice but overall it's a good amount of workspace considering All right, so that's what the bolt looks like on the other side. I'm going to go ahead and get that off of there. Okay, so we got both lines loose and the bolts that hold it in place loose. So now all you got to do, move the lines out of the way and pull the master cylinder forward. All right, there we go. So... You'll notice that there's brake fluid up in here, so I'm going to go ahead and, you know, wipe that out of there, get it dry as possible. You don't want to leave that fluid in there and have it, you know, causing issues over time. All right, so this is the new one. So this new um this new uh cylinder, master cylinder comes with like two plastic um stoppers that goes where the you see these yellow little plugs are. So that's the way I'm gonna I'm gonna use these plugs, not these yellow ones, but this gray one here, as supplied with the master cylinder. I'm gonna use those to do the bleeding. You know, like um, I don't know if you know the the, the bleeding, um, the way with a like of plastic tubes you they would have plastic tubes connected to the back of these and it goes back into the master cylinder this is actually an easier way than using the plastic tubes okay so what you want to do is once you get these stoppers in there you want to put brake fluid 
just below that line that you see that middle line on the reservoir there all right so you, you're not going to fill it but you're going to put the brake fluid just below that line If you notice, there is like a hump in the middle of the uh, reservoir. So you want to make sure the brake fluid, brake fluid clears that hump till you got brake fluid just above there. All right. So what you want to do also after at this point is remove your stoppers and make sure that fluid is actually coming out of each hole. Get these stoppers removed, and you're going to notice that the brake fluid is going to come, you know, start running out pretty soon after I do that. You just notice it's coming out of that one, so I'll get that back in there. And here it comes from the other one. You notice I also have the um, master cylinder kind of leant, you know, leaned to one side, and kind of have the holes slightly upwards. You know, I, I did that purposely to make sure that the cylinder is pretty full the um the tube below or you know the at the bottom there of the reservoir that cylinder I want to make sure that the fluid actually fills up you know that tube or that passage so this is where you use your screwdriver and you want to push in on that piston push it in Hold it at least for 30 seconds, okay? And you want to push in, you know, don't go more than an inch in, okay? You, you want to do that several times until you see no more bubbles coming up inside. Look, Looking down inside the reservoir, there shouldn't be any bubbles coming up. So push and hold. All right, this one looks pretty good, so I'm going to go ahead and install it. And, and actually, this cylinder actually, you know, pumped up pretty quickly compared to some others that I've done. You know, normally it'll take me, you know, almost five minutes or more you know to get the, all the air out of the, the cylinder but this one actually you know pumped up pretty quickly all right so now I'm gonna go ahead and get my bolts back these are the retaining bolts two to the rear Go ahead and get them tight on. Make sure you know they're um, decent amount of torque. You know, tighten them down. You don't need to use um, anything for leverage. Just tighten it, you know, the best you can. You know, with just the wrench only. Should be good to go 
we'll just tighten it down that way. These um the nuts that hold this cylinder in place, they have um like Loctite, like a you know, locking system already built into them, so they shouldn't, you know, come loose over time. Alright, so now I'm gonna go ahead and get these stoppers out of there one at a time. And as I remove the stopper, I'm gonna try to get my line in place as quickly as possible. So as soon as I get that stopper out of there, I'm going to hurry up and get the line in place to prevent the loss of brake fluid or too much brake fluid loss. And this is the messy part of the job. I gotta try to do this as quickly as possible while your fingers are messy and slippery. Get my um, brake fluid sensor, brake fluid level sensor reconnected. Make sure it's on there tight. Then I'm moving on to the front brake line. And this bar you see across the screen, you know, might be a good idea if you want to loosen that bar, just move it out of your way. Gives you a little more space to work but that's entirely up to you. So once get this, um, get both of these lines tightened down. What you want to do is top up the reservoir and then from this point we're going to do the bleed of the entire system. That the bleeding, what the bleeding does is get gets the air out of the system because anytime you open the brake line or you do a master cylinder replacement or brake part any 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 opening of the brake system the entire system has to be bled after okay so what we're going to do is just get it cleaned up and i'm going to go ahead and top up the reservoir and then can begin and begin the bleeding process so Always, when bleeding the brake system, you always go to the wheel that is furthest away from the master cylinder. So the master cylinder is on the driver's side, left, left front driver's side. So you're going to go to the right rear wheel first of all. Okay, so I have the engine running and I'm pumping the brake you know, four or five times, and I use that piece of pipe to hold the brake down, wedge it between the brake pedal and the seat. Okay, this is my one-man brake bleeding system or setup. Okay, so with the pipe holding the brake pedal down, this is um, the nipple on this. These calipers are 10 millimeter, so I'm going to use my. This is where I use my 10 millimeter wrench. Okay, I get that little um, cap off of there. It's a little rubber cap to prevent water and dirt from getting down inside of the bleeder nipple. Because these things, without that rubber nipple on, I mean cover on there, 
Water getting in these things will um, rust them and lock them up. Okay. So you want to open, make sure there is no air. So what I did, I went back and pumped, pumped again, pumped and rejammed, rejammed the uh, brake pedal, and came back. Okay. So that's a better, higher pressure. So I'm comfortable with that pressure there. So I'm going to move to the left side of rear wheel put my cap back on and I'm moving to the left rear wheel and I'm gonna repeat the same process cap off Pump, pump the brakes, rejam, then open the system. And what you're looking for is a nice steady stream. Shouldn't be wide or bubbly looking. Once it's clear like that, you know it's good. Sometimes Depending on how much air is in the system, you'll open the line and then there'll be nothing coming out but air. Okay. So I pumped and jammed again. Now I'm going to my right front wheel. So you want to do, remember, all the, all the calipers furthest away from the master cylinder in sequence. So you start with the right rear, left rear, right front, and then the last one would be the left front, which is closest to the master cylinder. All right, so that was a nice strong stream there. I'm comfortable with that. So last one is the driver side left so pump again and jam after each caliper you have to pump pump and hold make sure the pedal is down hold down the pedal which i use this pipe to do it you can use whatever you can have somebody pump for you and hold or you can use you know piece of stick whatever will fit you know you can do what works for you okay so this is the front left Looks good too. So I'm pretty much done at this point. What you want to do is make sure your fluid is topped off. And this is the um, AC uh, pressure, pressure switch. I'm reconnecting here. Okay, anything you want on hook, make sure to reconnect. All right. That piece of cardboard you see I had on the, the ground there and to catch the brake fluid. So that's it. Job is done. I'm the DIY Yardy. If this video was helpful, please give me a thumbs up, like, and consider subscribing to my channel for more helpful videos. 
All right. Bless up.